Hello, this is Oli De Ayatunde, and I want to share the word of God with you in a few minutes. But before we do that, I'd like us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that as we go into the word of God, that you will bless us indeed from your word in the name of Jesus. You inspire our hearts to wisdom and help us to make better decisions in life. Thank you, Lord, because you're God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to share the word of God with you with a title, Unwavering Faith, a faith that does not waver. The Bible says in the book of James that let not that man that wavers think that he will receive anything from the Lord, because such one is not stable in all his ways. Therefore, I want to look at the life of Abraham in the book of Romans chapter 4 from verse 18 to 21. I'd like us to see seven attitude of such a person that does not have a wavering feet. And I'd like you to join me in Romans chapter 4 from verse 18 to 21. The first thing we see, number one, is that Abraham against hope believed in hope. It means that when all hope seemed to have been lost, Abraham was 100 years. And it doesn't look like he was going to give birth again. But the Bible says even when all hope seemed lost, Abraham believed in hope. That's very important for you and I. Hope is very important for life. We must realize that even when all hope seemed lost, we must believe in hope. Because that's what keeps us alive. Abraham, even when he was 100 years old, still believed in hope. And that's the evidence that such person has unwavering faith. Amen. Number two attitude that we see in Abraham is the fact that the Bible says that he was not weak in faith. Verse 19 says, and be not weak in faith. You see, we need to exercise ourselves in faith such that we will not be weak in faith. You know, many people are weak in faith. They become so weakened that they can't even pray for malaria. They can't even pray for headache. They can't pray for anything. Their, work is so, their faith is so weak that, um, you know, they depend on everybody and anybody for miracles in their life. That's not who we ought to be. The Bible says Abraham was not weak in faith. It means that he has exercised himself so much so that the Bible records that he was not weak in faith. So I want to implore you that don't be weak in faith. Be strong in faith. And we'll get to that place very soon. Number three thing that we see in the life of Abraham was that he did not consider his body dead. He didn't consider the circumstances around him. Circumstances around him said his body was dead, that Sarah's womb was dead, you know. But Abraham didn't consider that. The Bible said he did not consider his body dead. And so I want to say to you that don't consider the circumstances around you. Be like Peter at the voice of Jesus, jumped into the, into the sea and began to walk on water. Unfortunately, when he began to consider the boisterous wind of the water, it began to sink. The reason why many of us sink is because we consider so much the circumstances around us and they make us sink. And as you sink, you find out that you begin to stink. God wants us to float and to walk upon water. So I implore you, don't consider the circumstances around you. Just act on the word of God, which is faith driven. Number four, the Bible said it did not stagger at the promise. What does it mean to stagger at the promise? It means that you are in and out. You're not stable. The Bible said Abraham was not, was, not, was not wavering. He was focused on the promise of God. Therefore, the promise of God came to him. He received the promise of God because he was focused on the word of God and the promise of God for his life. He was steadfast in the promise of God. He staggered not at the promise. I, I implore you this day that you should not stagger at the promise. Those things that God has promised in the past, they will come to pass 
if only you can focus on what God has said concerning you. Number five, the Bible said he was strong in faith. Wow. What does it mean to be strong in faith? And we're not talking about quantity here. We're talking about quality. Remember Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a seed of mustard, you will say to the mountain, be thou cast to the sea, and it will happen the way you said it. So we're not talking about quantity. We're talking about quality. So it says, be strong in faith. Be strong. How do you become strong? You exercise yourself. You exercise yourself. You put your faith to use. Always praise God. Number six. Bible said in verse in verse um, twenty also. He said he gave glory to God. Many of us, because of the situations in our life, we have stopped giving glory to God. We have stopped praising God. We have stopped, all we do is complain and complain and whine and whine and complain and complain. I think that it is important that you stop complaining and start to give glory to God. Give praise to God in the morning. Give praise to God in the noon. Give praise to God at night. Give praise to God all the time. Even when it seems that he has not done what you're expecting from him. Give praise to God. And as you do that, you find out that your life becomes better. The Bible said about Abraham. He was giving glory to God. And I like it to imbibe that culture of always giving glory to God. In all situations, the Bible said, give thanks to God. And you find out that in due season, the promise of God over your life will come to pass. Number 17 and the last thing, the Bible said, he was fully persuaded. Verse 21 says, I'm being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. I think that's one of the missing links in our lives. Many of us are not fully persuaded that what God has promised us is able to do it. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. So it means that even in your thoughts, the things in your thoughts, God is able to do them. It means that the things you ask, God is able to do them. Not just that, He can do exceedingly exceeding abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think according to the power that is at work in us. So it means that you and I have a part to play in fulfilling the agenda of God upon our lives. So it says that it was fully persuaded, fully convinced. Nothing was able to convince him otherwise. Nothing was able to confuse him and to say that God is not able to do it. Bible said he was fully persuaded. I want you to be persuaded that God is able to do all that you can ever ask or think. It's just about you knowing that God is able to do it. And before you know it, he will do it. You know, but this will not apply to you if you are not born again. It will not apply to you if you have not given your life to Christ. Therefore, I invite you to give your life to Christ tonight. And say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I know that I am a sinner. Therefore, I have called upon you that you should come into my life. Come in today and come in to stay. Be my Lord and Savior. And I'll be your, I'll be your son. I'll be your daughter. I'll serve you all the days of my life. Thank you for accepting me. Hallelujah to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. If you have said that prayer, you're a born again Christian. I'd like you to look for a Bible believing church close to you and begin to attend. And as you do that, God bless you. Let us pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that as we have listened to your word, you help us to imbibe this culture, these attitudes in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you're God. Lord, I declare that our way will become prosperous in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you're God. In Jesus' name I pray. In case you want to call, I'd like you to call this number. 070-360-1540.
God bless you.